Hey everyone, today's talk is on sickle cell and travel. So one of the things that we haven't really talked about too much is about the change in elevation when people living with sickle cell travel. So there is a stipulation that uh, there are elevation restrictions connected with the sickle cell because of an increase in stroke risk. So um, internationally that level of elevation is typically right around 8,000 feet which conveniently is what an airplane cabin is pressurized to. So many people have a misconception that if you live with sickle cell, you cannot fly. And that is actually not true because that airplane cabin uh, on a commercial airplane is pressurized. You can indeed fly, um, usually without any uh, accommodations. Some people, depending on their severity of pain crises and their uh, baseline oxygen saturation, might need to travel with oxygen, but the majority of people living with sickle cell in commercial airlines do not have to use oxygen. The exception is if you're on um, an airplane that is not pressurized. So those are some of those private airplanes or um, airplanes that are in other countries that are just what they call like puddle jumpers that are going from place to place like in Hawaii that might be going above 8,000 feet that aren't pressurized. This also applies when you are traveling uh, by car or on the ground. One example uh, that's been in the media quite a bit is going up into the mountains, especially into Denver. So there actually is uh, little evidence that going up to Denver itself causes a pain crisis. However, some people are very susceptible to that transition between uh, sea level and any type of elevation. Uh, they call Denver the Mile High City because its elevation is 5,280 feet, which is exactly a mile. And it is at the bottom of a major mountain pass called the Rocky Mountains. If you travel over the Rocky Mountains, it actually caps out just under 12,000 feet in Vail Pass, which is well above that recommended 8,000. The uh, norm guidelines for people that are coming up to Denver uh, are to use some type of oxygen at night um, as they're proceeding up to Denver from sea level to get their body acclimated with being at this elevation. However, at this point, there's no actual research that shows that. It's just been a personal experience from all the families that either live up in Denver or, like our family, travel back and forth to Denver uh, for business or to visit relatives or friends. Um, However, going beyond that 8,000 feet becomes very dangerous because the oxygen uh, availability, the higher up you go, decreases. And we already know that a decrease in oxygen uh, causes an increase in sickling, which can lead to those blockages that we uh, refer to as pain crises, which are actually tissue damage within your blood vessels. So when traveling, pay attention to the elevation that you're going to. Um, if you think they're going to be going more than, uh, you know, 2,000 feet above where you're normally at, you might want to consult your hematologist to see if they recommend any kind of oxygen usage and avoid any of those elevations that are above 8,000 feet or less in an emergency. Anything above that can in increase the risk of sickling in your brain, which is actually a stroke. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org. Post any comments or questions below and think about signing up for our newsletter, which is just a simple email newsletter I send out once a quarter with additional education, fun facts, and videos um, from a variety of people that we work with and from us ourselves. Thanks.